Open up your Bibles, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. It's good to see Pastor Enzo back from down under. He was in Australia. We both went to Australia. I came home and I left him over there. Somehow he made his way back, but praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Tell your neighbor, God loves a cheerful giver. Verse 8, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. While you are enriched in everything... For all liberality, which causes thanksgiving through us to God. I, I want to talk about the cycle of giving. The cycle of giving. Now, giving is not something that we do. Giving is who we are. We are givers. That's what we do. Just like a, a farmer is always planting a, a crop and, and reaping a harvest, right? That's, that's what, what they do. That's their identity. You know, it's not just something that, that they, they do, but that's who they really are. And God has called us to be givers. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm a giver. The Word of God says it is more blessed to give than to receive. Not it's better or it's a blessing. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Now, all of us love to give. Uh, all of us love to receive. All of us love to receive. But it's more blessed to give. When you are a giver, you have received power to give. You are not giving from a place of lack. You're giving from a place of abundance. How many of you know that it's, it's a blessing to have your, your kitchen full of food? And it's more blessed to give than to receive. But the Bible says that when I give, I am not just releasing, I am sowing. And Paul writes in this scripture that as I sow, according to the way that I sow, is the way I am going to receive. See, my responsibility is not to figure out how I'm going to receive. My responsibility is to figure out how I'm going to give. It is God's responsibility to bring it back to me. It's God's responsibility to make sure that I can receive, but not just the way I gave, but even greater. There's that saying, you can count how many seeds that are in an apple, but you can't count how many apples that are in a seed. That's the way the word of the Lord says that when we give in our time, our ability, our finances, and anything that we give and we bring it before the Lord, we will receive back. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I'm a farmer. I'm a sower. I sow great seeds. When God gave us the, the ministry of preaching the gospel to the nations through television, at the time there was no Christian channels and no Christian networks. I could tell you stories about the very first time that we were able to go on the airwaves. Like even the local Christian channel, Channel 44, that was a station that God had blessed my family with, and we turned it over to TBN so that they could use it for the preaching of the gospel. And we have stations all over the, the country that were just like that. My father was an apostle in this area, 
And so it wasn't about trying to get things to build our own personal ministry. Our desire was to follow the word of the Lord. Whatever God told us to do, we did. My father would find out there was a station that would be available. And he would meet a local minister, a pastor. And he would ask him, can I apply for that TV station in your name? Because you have to be a local resident to get these community stations. And the pastor didn't understand what TV was or, or what that meant. But he said, yeah, it's not going to cost me nothing. No, 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 no. I'll do this, all this work. And my dad would do what the work that he would do. It, it cost like $50,000 to do because he, he had to do engineering and lawyer work to apply for the Federal Communication Commission, the FCC, to get the, the stations back. And so my dad would apply for it, and they would grant him the construction permit to build that TV station. And my father would go to the church and the pastor, and he would give him the, the, the station. And the, the man would look at the, the paper and the construction permit, and he'd say, what do I do with this? And my dad would say, preach the gospel. Look at your neighbor and say, preach the gospel. If you ask me, what am I going to do with this? I'm always going to tell you, preach the gospel. You, could, you might be holding a dozen tamales in your hand. And you might say, what am I going to do this? Preach the gospel. How do I preach the gospel? Give it to someone who's hungry and bless them and pray for them. Everything's a seed. And as we built our, our TV networks, we had hundreds of stations around the world. We used to find people that were anointed by God, and we would put them on for free. Why would we do that? Because our desire was for the preaching of the gospel. Let me just tell you, I, I, I've been in Christian television since I was a little kid. What destroyed Christian television was where those that had the mission for the preaching of the gospel and they had these TV networks and then they charged every church and every ministry that had a, preach, had a ministry to preach the gospel. And then those TV programs became just telethons raising up money. And if they couldn't raise up enough money through the offerings over the air, then they began to sell the books. Why? Because they were trying to do things in business when it should have been so free as we work together for the preaching of the gospel. My father, I'm telling you, is such an awesome anointed man of God. Not only to get the TV stations, but to figure out how to do things with no money. He helped a network in, uh, in the Caribbean called Cadena de Milagro, and it, it covered all of uh, uh, Central America and, and Spain. And then another network, Enlace, my father was, was working with them as they established their network all over South America. And then we had our network in North America, and we would air their program, they would air our program, and we would cover the world, and there was no money exchange. What should have taken hundreds of millions of dollars it was through relationships and the, and the mission of the gospel of Jesus Christ going forth that caused these things to happen. Amen. And we have always been blessed and we've always been used by God because we're givers. God could have given this idea of Jesus pod to anybody in the world. But he gave it to me. Why did he give it to me? Because he knew my heart. He knew my desire. He knew that, that this was not for the glory of man, but this was for the glory of God. You can't buy your way on that app. The only way you get on that app is if you're anointed. If you're anointed, I want you. If you're not anointed, you go, go, talk, go talk to other people that don't want to hear that, that head knowledge, but not the heart knowledge. Amen. And so everything about me is I'm a giver. As I give, God works it out on my behalf for me to receive. I am not the one that blesses me. He's the one that blesses us. My, my reward does not come from man. My reward comes from the Lord. 
He is my source. He is my supply. He is my blesser. He is my future. He is everything to me. The world will do everything with, uh, with money. They figure, you know, let me just put a little bit of money and get relationship. Yeah, you might, you might get a little bit of, of, of time, but you won't get my heart. But the kingdom is all about relationship. Do you believe that? And the word of the Lord says that when we sow into the kingdom of God, the promise is that you will always have more than enough, more than enough, so that you could sow more. Say, God will bless me so I could give more. Oh, Pastor, I, I, I want God to bless me so I can have more. He will bless you so that you can sow more. But as you're sowing more, you will be blessed more. Amen. There was this one man, I've, I've shared this, this is, a, this is a testimony about some of the great things God has done through different people. But this one man, he was, he was getting ready to steal money that he borrowed from a bank. He had borrowed $50,000 and, and he had done these, this little, uh, he, he did some, some things for the like bathroom vanities. He had a little construction company and it wasn't doing well so he borrowed money about fifty thousand dollars and he was planning on running off to mexico with the money and stealing it but before he did that he was watching our program with my father and god spoke to him and said go meet that man so he showed up to the church to meet my father and he told my dad what was going on his business was failing and he was going to take the money and run off with it and, and my father told him, give God a tithe and watch what God would do. And the man said, I don't know who's crazier. Me wanting to steal the money or your dad wanting, asking me for an, a tithe of the money I'm getting ready to steal. And he said, you know who's crazier? I was because I gave it to him. But when he gave that tithe, he went back to his office and he had an orders from one of the largest home goods retailers and it changed everything about his life. He went from trying to steal money to now multiple, multiple millions of dollars. One of the most wealthiest men in the Rio Grande Valley. All because he obeyed the word of the Lord. Amen. I want to encourage you today. To get connected to the work of the Lord. Sow into the kingdom of God and make that your priority. N not looking for God's blessing, but looking for God's opportunity to sow the seed. Your blessing will be released as you release the seed. As you sow, you shall reap a harvest. God will make it his personal responsibility to perform his word over your life. Amen. God is not a liar and he's not a tease. If he has done it for one, he would do it for all. He is looking for someone that will believe him and trust him and step out in faith. Many of us have needs. Many of us have bills that cannot be paid. We have dreams that we have not been able to achieve. But I want to tell you, if you will turn your heart back to God and say, Father, I'm going to honor you. I'm going to sow into the kingdom. I'm going to begin to give greater than I ever gave in the past. If you will begin to trust in God's word and step out in faith and put yourself in a position to watch and see what God will do. I'm telling you, the Lord will show forth his goodness. He will perform his word over your life. He's faithful. He's faithful. And you could be someone with a lot. If you have much, so much. You, if you have little, so little. So where you are at. Amen. Because when it's all said and done, it's not about the economy. It's not about the president. It's not about your job. When it's all said and done, it's about your personal relationship with the Lord. 
where you could stand and say, okay, I don't have a way. I don't know how this is going to work out, but my trust and my confidence is in the Lord. He is faithful to do it. You could look at your tithe. You could look at your offering and say, Father, I am a tither. I've sown into the kingdom of God. And your word says that you will take good care of me. That as I've sown a little, I will reap a little. As I've sown much, I will reap much. I put my eyes upon you. You are the Lord of the harvest. Amen. Such peace. Such peace. If you don't have enough to pay a bill, sow a seed. Hit your neighbor and say, where's your faith? There's that saying, if what you have is not enough, then it must be a seed. Amen. You know, even the world understands that. Do you know that? The world understands that. When what they have is not enough, what do they do? They go buy a lottery ticket. Isn't that true? Are you saying that God is a lottery ticket? No, I'm saying Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the one that will make a way for you. And so you have to release your faith. Release your faith. How many of you, have, you know, look at your neighbor and make a muscle and say, check it out, check it out. Check this, check this out. I've been working out. If you're sitting next to your wife, say, say just feel that, feel that, feel that. Your faith has to be like a muscle. Your faith has to be like a muscle. You could tell when someone work out, works out and so when someone does it. Amen? Well, the same thing with faith. You could tell if someone is walking by faith and when someone is not. Amen? Say, I trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. And for those that, you know, are really good, Pastor, I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You need to begin to give more. But, Pastor, I need another boat. No, you don't. You need to give more. God could bring the boat to you, but he has blessed you with prosperity for such a time as this. Listen, you cannot take what you have to the grave. No one's ever died pulling a U-Haul. Like even your house. Oh, this is my house. Yes, but when you leave this place, someone else is going to take possession of that house. You're really just, you know, you're just occupying. Amen. But if you put God first in everything that you do, put his kingdom first. Put the work of the Lord first. How many, how many of you are thankful that someone took time to preach to you one day so that you could be saved? How many are thankful that someone came in the name of the Lord and blessed you in a way that no one else knew how to bless you or prayed for you or encouraged you or, 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 or even ministered to you when you were sick? How many are thankful for that? The Bible says how, would, it says, how would they know without a preacher and how would they preach unless they are sent? When you are giving to the work of the Lord, you're giving to the kingdom, you are sending forth the men and women of God. Amen. Say giving is who I am, not just what I do. I am a giver. Hallelujah. And as a giver, anyone that you're around, they should be blessed because they're around you. Amen. And you might say, well, pastor, there are a lot of people that are always asking me for things. Praise the Lord. Because you never ask for things from someone that doesn't have the ability, or at least they, don't, they, they think that you have the ability to give. Don't get angry when God starts using you in your identity as a giver. Amen? Hallelujah. I'm a giver. I've given a lot yesterday. I'm going to give a lot today, and I'm going to give a whole lot more tomorrow. 
I am a giver. That's what I do. I give greatly to the work of the Lord. As God puts in my hand and puts his power upon my life, I will sow it back into the kingdom of God. Amen. Well, what's in it for me? To be used by God is the greatest blessing. To know that God could trust me with his wealth, with his heart, to be able to minister to those that are hurting, what a wonderful blessing that is. Amen. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Well, pastor, but I am in need. I don't have. There's something you could give. I don't have anything. Look at your neighbor's smile. smile. You could give a smile. You could give time. But I don't have much. Give where you're at. One last testimony, and then we're going we're gonna to give greatly to the kingdom of God. Amen? Let me share one last testimony. My mother, my father would go out and preach, and, and I've shared this testimony many times. If you heard it before, act like you just first time you ever heard it. Um, my father would go preach, and, and what he would do is he would drive from San Benito, Texas, all the way to New York City to visit his family, uh, and, and he would preach at all the churches that he could preach at along the way. So as he's driving over there and coming back, we didn't have no resources, no money, no, you know, just whatever he had left is what we had. And Kevin likes to eat. And my, my mother one day, my, my oldest brother, Carlos Jr., he came home and said, Mama, my friend doesn't have any food in his house. And I told him that we'd give him some groceries. And so... Uh, my mother, she's thinking, you know, we haven't gone to the grocery store. We don't got a lot of food for ourselves. Kevin eats a lot. And, and so she went to the kitchen, and she pulled out two bags, and she opened up the cabinets and just started putting groceries in the bags, and she blessed my brother's friend. Well, every time it was time to eat, she would go into the kitchen and open up the cabinets and pull out food and start cooking and just kept on doing that and kept on doing it, kept on doing it. Not even knowing or worrying or thinking that there was nothing. Every time she opened up the cabinet, there was food there. And my aunt, Minerva, which is who's sitting right over there, my mother didn't drive. Minerva was the one that, I'm not allowed to call her Minerva. Titi Mini. <laughs> she would drive my mother to the store. And one day she goes, she goes, Ada, how are you getting food? I haven't taken you to the store in weeks. And my mother thought, yeah, how am I going how have we been eating? And when she went into the kitchen, opened up the cabinets, there was no food in there. Just supernaturally, God was putting food in there. That's, there's a lesson there. When there's a blessing, don't question it. Just receive it. Just receive it. And thank God for it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How does God do it? He just does it. Amen. How many have big dreams, desires, things that you want to see happen in your life in the future? Amen. I want to tell you, God will do it for you. He's the one that put it in your heart. He'll provide. He'll take care of you. Amen. He's faithful. Y'all believe that? Hallelujah. Amen. Lift up your hands to heaven. Father, thank you. You are faithful. You are good. You are wonderful. I thank you, Father God, that every time that there might seem that there's a need, we have a provider who is faithful, that every need shall be taken care of, that there'll be no lack and no want in the household of faith. And so, Father, we've come before you today with our seeds these precious seeds, thanking you for providing for us yesterday. And, Lord, with faith that you will provide for us tomorrow. Lord, there's, you are so good and wonderful. And I pray over every person within the sound of my voice that every dream that you place in their heart, the dream of increase, the dream of providing for their family, 
the dream of being a blessing to the nations, that they will accomplish it, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I come against a spirit of lack. I come against a spirit of poverty. And I break your stronghold off their, off their life now in the name of Jesus. They are blessed by you, Father. And Father, I thank you that even this week, supernatural doors of prosperity increase are being opened to them. Thank you, Father God. We call in the harvest. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Give God praise, amen. <laughs>